Welcome to this episode of Orthodontics in Summary. This podcast is entitled, What Goes Wrong with Marpy? Now it follows on from a lecture given by Audrey Yoon at this year's AAO. The lecture was actually entitled, Don't Make the Same Mistakes that I Did, Marpy Complications. Now Audrey's lecture was an incredibly insightful lecture looking at this new topic within orthodontics. I had initially intended just to do a topic summary, looking at expansion from the AAO, combining a couple of other lectures, but actually Audrey's lecture was exceptional at shedding light on this topic of MARPI. It's great to hear about success stories and protocols working, and it's informative, but actually hearing about problems with MARPI is far more revealing. Audrey's also recently had a publication in the AJO Dio Clinical Companion, and I've combined those together for today's podcast. Just to recap, the podcast is the opinion piece of myself and the Orthodontics and Summary team, and it may not be 100% representative of the original lecture or paper, although we try our best to ensure that it is. It is the independent work of myself and the Orthodontics and Summary team. So getting back to today's topic. So Audrey's lecture and her paper are based upon her clinical experiences using MARPI. She's treated 256 patients in her paper, and she looked at both the successes, but also what complications took place. And that's the line part of this podcast. So starting off with the successes, well, 87% of patients had successful sutural separation. But what was interesting is when she looked at the different demographics, actually only 61% of males had success, whereas 94% of females did. The average expansion that was achieved was a whopping 7.8 millimeters of expansion. And this variation with gender and age made for an interesting explanation. So what Audrey did is found there's a negative correlation with age, i.e. as we get older, there's a great less chance of actually getting any expansion, and greater so in males. And just to give some numbers to this, usually at the age of 20, the planned expansion and the achieved expansion is usually one-to-one -one with MARPI, both for males and females. But as the patient gets older, this changes. So for 30 year olds, it's usually 50% of what's planned is achieved with males, but it's 80% with females. Now when it gets to 40, actually it's close to 0% for males, but it's 60% when it comes to females. The next thing was about asymmetric expansion. Now it's something which has been suggested, but actually Audrey really explored it. And she decided, she found out that over 50% of cases had some form of asymmetry at the ANS level. That's defining it as greater than one millimeter. 27%, so a quarter of patients had greater than two millimeter asymmetry that taken place. Relatively significant at this point. What's the cause of this asymmetry? So Audrey explained that it's to do with the nasal maxillary suture and how it can separate or it can remain closed during MARPI. Now actually, either or doesn't make a difference, but it's the ones where it closes on one side and is opened on the other side that creates the asymmetry. And that's in 30% of cases where it will then transpire. Now, comparatively, let's think about SARPI, so surgically assisted rapid palatal expansion. Asymmetries are quoted at between 3 and 13%, so far less than what we are seeing with SARPI. Next, she went on to describe pain. So pain is reported in around 50% of cases. Most of that's around the maxillary molar bands that she was using, and 10% of patients had headaches. How about gingival inflammation? Well, this was the most common complication of using MARPI. 83% of patients had some form of gingival inflammation. Now, she said they tried to manage this, and what they found was that if they changed the design from a flush design to the palate, and changed it from being one millimeter away for the screw, less inflammation took place, as well as the guiding arms being three millimeters away from the palate. It was interesting, they noticed a lot of inflammation taking place during the retention period. What they postulated was that actually there's relapse taking place and actually as the palatal vault, soft or hard tissues, relapse, this ends up resulting in Im embedding of the actual TADs into the soft palate. Breakages, so around about 10% of the MARPI appliances broke and it was usually the guiding arm or rod that would break. Now next are the rare complications, the ones that we don't want to see but actually are important that we discuss. Now, loss of vitality of the dentition is reported at 2% from what Audrey's experiences were. Now, they were the maxillary center in sizes that lost vitality and required management. But if we compare it to SARPI, it's far less, as their reports are around about 4.5%. Other things that can take place. Well, what Audrey described was that we can create fractures, unplanned fractures, by the use of MARPI. 
similar to what she described as a tripod injury. Now, what she described was the infraorbital numbness that can take place to patients. Three cases were reported in her cohort of patients. Fortunately, they were all temporary, but essentially there was numbness associated with the infraorbital region. She stopped the expansion for these cases, went backwards in it, advised the patient to have facial massages and use folate to resolve it, and it did resolve in the end, but disconcerting nonetheless. One patient reported having hearing loss. And when Audrey investigated this, this was down to zygomatic arch fracture. Fortunately, it was temporary, only lasted for a short period of time. Other things such as tetanus can also take place as well. Unexpected tears can be a result of a lateral infraorbital rim fracture. Sagging off the eyeball can take place as well, but infrequent. Popping off the ear, one portion reported. Now, as this was investigated, it turned out the lateral pterygoid fracture had occurred. And that brings us to the end of Audrey's content about the complications associated with MARPI. Now, Audrey has gone one step further and she's published a YouTube video which has had over 22,000 plays now for patients about the complications of MARPI. In her recent publication in the AJODO Clinical Companion, she's published her consent form, a growing number of items as has been detailed in this podcast. And I've really got to celebrate Audrey's um, confidence to give a lecture based upon complications, things going wrong. Also commonly we hear about success stories, about different appliances and processes, but actually to publish the bad is really informative to the audience. I know myself, I'll be taking away Audrey's YouTube video and directing my patients to it, but also her consent form. I've started my own MARP case recently and I'm looking to do, looking to do more in the future. That brings us to the end of this episode of Orthodontics in Summary. Please do subscribe and look forward to next episode.